How did this get made is going to be in Chicago and Minneapolis, Minnesota this week. That's right. Come check us out. Go to hdtgm.com to find out the four movies, two nights in each spot. It is going to be great. We're almost sold out in both places, but there are still seats available and you're not going to want to miss it. I don't even know what the outlying cities are, but get there. Bend, not bend. I don't know. South Bend. Anyway, get there any which way you can. Go to hdtgm.com and you'll find out the movies and how to get tickets. We'll see you out on the road. It's 1984 and New York is overrun by plutonium killers, henchmen who chew on their ponytails, shirtless marsh fishing in Speedos, and lots of slow karate. We saw New York Ninja, so you know what that means. For a movie that was made for New Jersey. <laughs> New York Ninja. Let me tell you a little bit about New York Ninja. New York Ninja is a movie that was shot in 1984, but came out in 2021. It is about a man whose wife is killed on the day she finds out she's pregnant. And then he goes on to find the Killers, I think, maybe. <laughs> and stop an international prostitution ring that may or may not be just models in the city. <laughs> Again, I'm not quite sure of the plot. I know New York is prominent. I know ninjas are prominent. And I know there's a New York ninja. But... The rest is all up in the air. Here to break it down for you even more are my two co-hosts. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Jason Manzoukas! <laughs> What's up, jerks? How we doing? Central Jersey? Oh, shit! Oh, shit! That's right, New York Ninja, a movie that makes total sense that I just found out was released in 2021. 20. What are you talking about? That this, blew my entire mind back there. This movie, uh, like the Great Miami Connection, was found oh, many years Give it up later. for the Miami Connection. Come on. It was found many years later without the soundtrack. So a director came in and decided to put it together without knowing what the script was. Wait a minute, for this movie? Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, we gotta, before you even get into this, yeah. get June out here, let's do this. Okay. Here she now, is. June, Diane, Raphael! Come out. What? I. What are you saying, Paul, with your words? You're saying that someone found this movie without sound? Is that what I heard? Wait, First are we of doing all, all standing? Because I'll stand. I'll do this show on my feet. 
the first ever standing show. First of all, June, how are you? I'm okay. How are you, Paul? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Yes, this movie was found. A found? Th- found. <laughs> So I this is truly when idea. they say when they say it's found footage. This movie is found footage. I'm not ready to sit yet. I'm, I, I, I'm not either. I feel unsettled. Uh, yeah, I need to. I, I'm just picturing need someone to be on my toes. coming across this at a yard sale <laughs> and being like, I don't know. I'll throw a dialogue on this. That's what I'm saying. What? Okay, so I will tell you a little bit more. If we're if we're gonna continue standing for yeah. those of you who are listening, you're out of the light now, though. You're in the dark. All right. So. Abandoned footage from 1984 was abandoned. Abandoned. Like now I feel bad for the movie. So someone adopted this movie. (laughs) Just like that little orphan. It found its forever cinema. (laughs) Just like the little orphan in the film, someone rescued and went fishing with it to make it whole again. Um, I thought for sure. This was just, because obviously the whole thing is ADR looped the entire thing. Yes. I thought for sure it was just recorded without sound for expense reasons. Well. Do you know what I thought, actually? So, and I know we have to sit down at some never, point. I'm just not ready never. to. We're on our feet I'm for you, New ready. Jersey. For you, Balcony. So I actually thought at one point, so our main character, whoever that person is, The New York Ninja, yes. The New York Ninja himself, it appeared to me at one point that he is the sound person. Yes. Yes. The sound technician for the the New York, like, eyewitness news news. So then I thought, wow, was that actor playing a sound person and also the movie sound person? Wow. And so now there's no sound. I would love that. But it sounds like... I need even more bizarre. Go ahead. Well, I can give you a couple details. That actor, John Liu, who was playing John Liu, an employee <laughs> of the New York City television station, uh, wrote and directed this film. But what <laughs> does not do the voice of John Liu? That is done by Don the Dragon Wilson. The reason why the end credits only have as the voice of is because they can't find the actual actors. Wait, the actors who were in the movie? Yes, all the credits are... Because they've all been disappeared? What happened? This, I think, 1984 to now, people may have passed on. People may have... Everyone from 84? (laughs) There's, these, there are children in this movie. You think all of the I Heart New York Ninja kids are R.I.P.? And by the way, if they are, if the entire cast of New York Ninja is dead uh, by 2021 or whenever you say this was, then like, let's start an investigation. That's like, a let's, documentary. Let's absolutely appoint a special counsel. That is Something very happened. First, the very first How Did This Get Made docuseries. Where we what? investigate, yes, we something investigate happened. the suspicious deaths of everyone in this movie. Now, I will also say that at all of their grave sites, there were traces of plutonium. Oh, from the plutonium killer? Yes. No, so here's the thing. Uh, the original footage was in film reels. It ran about six to eight hours in length. Thank God. And we're going to watch it right now. Lights! Um, and it included no actor credits, so they don't know who a lot of these actors are. So that's why they're... What are you saying? <laughs> what? What? And I'll, I'll give you a couple details. The abandoned footage was eventually acquired by... I love by... that you keep using the word abandoned. <laughs> as if it was found on the side of the road. I know. Here's what I want to know. Because... What I think might have happened is somebody just never cut it together. That doesn't mean it was abandoned. No. No, it was left in a cardboard box at a fire station. If you remember, Miami Connection was found on eBay. Now some of us are sitting down, some of us are going to stand up. No, that's fine. The rest of the night, we're going to be up and down, I can tell. All right, so when the abandoned, left alone footage, whatever you want to call it, was found... There was no audio, 
storyboards, or scripts for the film. It was reconstructed by a new director called Curtis M. Spieler. The dub dialogue was recorded by new actors. And what he likes to say is, he suspects, the director suspects, that Lou may have been unable to complete the film before production shut down because it doesn't feel like it was finished. The eight-hour cut. (laughs) No. Uh, They wanted to maybe shoot some new scenes, but he said no. He insisted on only using the original footage, claiming, if my job had been to be an editor in 1984, what would I have done? And I was very aware of trying to maintain what I thought the intended spirit or tone of the production was. I knew there was a fair amount of intentional or unintentional humor to the movie, but I tried to take the project seriously and respectfully to the original source material. And he would watch the actor's lips yes. and would uh, okay, try so- to dub to it. And only when he couldn't read the original dialogue, then he would rewrite lines. Wow. That is... Now I'm like, is this the best movie we've ever watched? I was just going to say, that makes me love this movie even more. And spoiler alert, I loved this movie. I did too. It's a great movie. I'll give you a couple, a couple more details. Um, keep so, in mind, just for one brief yeah. moment, if you will, Paul, keep in mind, yesterday we watched Jonathan Livingston Seagull. Yeah. At which point I tried to drown myself in the Hudson. So this was a... I took so few notes for that show last night, and I took so many notes. I have five pages. I basically transcribed the whole movie just because I was like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't... Wait, plutonium killer? (laughs) Gigantic boobs? What is this movie? Here are the details that we know from some of the surviving crew members. The crew members are dead, too? And I also, I don't love that you're using surviving as if everybody who worked on this movie, as if this movie, to work on it, was as if it's The Ring. <laughs> oh. Or, or, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's that, Jers? He said, it, because of the plutonium. Maybe they actually had real plutonium okay. on set. So. <laughs> I would love that. Wait, do we know? Okay, sorry, go ahead. Well, I'll tell you a couple things. So the film special effects artist, Carl Moreno, said we had zero resources. He estimates the special effects budget was $100. Most of which he spent, most of which he spent on the plutonium killer's melting face. Not all. Not 85 bucks. Then this movie is the best movie we've all ever seen. Yes, They did a great job. I'm sorry, so are you saying that the director who found the abandoned footage, yes. the orphan footage, that, that that director never contacted the star and writer of the movie? I believe that John Liu, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, an actor in 20 karate films from Taiwan and Spain is past. No. Oh. Okay, there no. we go. I, well, I suspected, because what? He, he lives, lives on, on a, a river. river. Why do you know that he lives on a river? He so, lives on a river in Vietnam. I was there last month. I had a great time with him. Just in case you didn't hear it, a balcony monster revealed that John Liu is not dead. He lives but on a river. A river. <laughs> let's in be Vietnam, clear. not down by a river. Yeah. On a like river. Like Chris Farley's famous character. Let's be clear. That is deeply suspect information simply because it came from a Jersey balcony. (laughs) So, I don't know why... Most everybody up there is shirtless with a 40 tape to their hand. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, that's what we're working with. Um... So he was so so he was alive when the the footage was adopted. Was shot? Yeah. <laughs> and so he just didn't have anything. I guess he was on the river and they couldn't contact him. I don't what? know Vietnam River specifics. <laughs> I'm sure that people in the the last looks episode will kind of tell us all the details that we want to know about John Liu, but 
Well, Paul, I know you already said yes. this, but will you repeat it just because I've forgotten? What year was the abandoned movie discovered? No, when it was, well, that when was, was the movie was shot. That's when it was shot. Was it also discovered then? <laughs> that would feel Jersey, like a- get it together. 84, I know. Filming. Filming 40s, began. 40s taped to both hands. Filming began in late 1984, and the film was released by Vinegar Syndrome in 2021. So I imagine at one point, this was pulled out of the archives somewhere because there were ads for this film in a trade magazine in 1984. It was shelved after 20, uh, 21st Century Distribution Corporation went bankrupt and sold its assets. So somewhere for a long time, wow. there were eight hours of footage sitting on a shelf. Ugh. Someone found it. I wish it. we had access to all that footage. Well, I will tell you that the one thing they were able to find was the rap song originally recorded for the film, and that actually plays over the end credits. Wow. The rest of the music was from the Detroit band Voyager 3, who lists their inspiration as vintage horror action and sci-fi films like John Carpenter, which makes them a perfect fit for this. So that's, Home run. you know, so this is a very, yeah. this is a labor of love. And I will say, as much as I loved it, knowing that it had no end and knowing that new dialogue was recorded, it doesn't attempt to make any sense. <laughs> So much so that I found myself rewinding and going, wait, did I hear that? Because the opening scene, we meet John Liu, who bumps into his wife on the street. The whole movie, the whole movie is stolen exterior shots. They don't have any locations. They don't have any interiors. When You're he goes watching to talk, people watch the camera in every shot oh, yeah. when there's another the person. The scene where all the... The, 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 one of the scenes where one of the street gangs attacks two women and there is just absolutely a melee of chaotic energy in the middle of the day, in the background of the scene, a woman is putting her laundry into her car. <laughs> when it's a, nuts. When John Lou's wife is... Nita? Yes, when she is getting her throat <laughs> slashed, a woman walks up from the subway like, doo -doo 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 -doo. but I actually found that to make New York way more scary. Yes. Because it seemed like it was like 7 a.m. on a Wednesday morning, and this woman was like, Listen, another every, throat slash. All of the violent crimes happen in broad daylight. Like, it's noon. And women are being lined up and yeah. ushered out of a warehouse. It is. In the bright light of day, in slips. It's, There's so many slips in this movie. Uh, There's so many slips. There when are, he goes to talk to the police officer, he doesn't go to a police station. He doesn't go to a police cruiser. He just walks along the Williamsburg... Uh, like, most of this shot... Most of this movie is shot in an abandoned lot in Williamsburg. Yes. Like, truly, it's just like up against the fence. He's like, well, I'm a police officer, so I don't know what's going on with you. Well, but. as you're talking about that, I will say the reason why we picked this movie for New Jersey is if you look closely at the police officers, they have Hoboken Police Department <laughs> on their badges. Hoboken Police Department, front and center, and yet it's New York Ninja. But listen, we, we have so much to talk about, but I just, not, because we're on the police officers and their, and their outfits, their costumes, their uniforms, I was so obsessed with the main cop's hat. Yeah. Great hat. I, and I stared at it for so long. I paused it. I looked at it. If he turned around and I had like a, a rear shot of it, I paused that to look at it again. Because it seemed that he had taken a trucker's hat that's meant to sort of sit atop the head, and he had folded it in the middle to sort of make a more, like, military-style cap. And I thought, well, did they, not have a, did they not have a hat that fit his head? And so he had to? Who even Or knows? was that a choice? Yeah. 
And again, I, that's what this movie left me with. Just like, I don't understand a thing and I want to know so much well, more example, and I love it. For example, if you will, indulge me while I read aloud the title card that shows up the first thing please, that starts in this movie. Please, yes. 1984. Crime is at an all-time high. Gangs of drugged-out punks roaming the streets, preying on the innocent. A mm-hmm. rash of kidnappings involving young women has gripped the city with fear. The citizens of New York are fed up. The city needs hope. The city needs a hero. <laughs> there is not a single punk in this movie. The, 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 the street toughs are all wearing bandanas around their thighs like Chachi. And one of them is dressed like a Halloween cowboy at one point. I was these like, are, I don't get this. These are the people that you would put in the deep background in the movie Warriors. It was like, deep, back, deep. Like, yeah, yeah, you're on camera. You know, it's like, we just need bodies. And they all look, and I have a feeling the reason why they're all wearing masks is because they're the same actor <laughs> over time oh. and time again. But I'm even going to go one step further and say this. Um, it doesn't seem like the city's fed up. No. As a matter of fact, it seems like business as usual. Um, yeah, you're so right, Paul. Like, people are still so comfortable in this city walking around warehouses and factories with no one around. Oh, and they're just like, bah, 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 chat, 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 <laughs> yeah. chat. Until, like, a midday group of, <laughs> of toughs it's descends on people. them. Uh, and the only hope is for John to slip away from his reporting <coughs> crew so he can transform into the New York Ninja so that they can then be like, where which were you? Is, you missed it. Which is revealed very late. Like, the fact that John even works for the news is shocking. Shocking. Because it, it, it's like, it would be like the movie Superman, but we don't meet Clark Kent or know that he has a job until, like, the last section of the movie, like... Oh, he's a reporter? Oh, okay. Like, when he was carrying the sound equipment, because at first I thought he was just along with the news crew hunting down his wife's killer. When, he, when his wife gets killed, <laughs> before she gets a knife to the belly, she's pregnant, by the way. Not cool. The way they slash her throat and she falls down the stairs like... She falls down. She falls down the stairs like someone who has arthritis trying to do stunts. It's like I I got it. She might have got it, but she then does a full like jazz head roll, like a full dance move, which I love. Loved. She might as well have gotten. It's as I will say this. It's as if everybody in the movie knew they would be dubbed by some people, someone else, twenty plus years in the future. Like, it, it, it's so shocking to me that that's not the case because it I makes know. so much more sense. Their performances are so enormous that they were like, well, we're going to have to big, make it big because we're not even recording sound. We'll have to dub this all later. I, I just want to play the opening scene because just play to the whole thing. This. Clip one here. Take a look at clip one. <sighs> Sorry, I'm late. <gasps> Happy birthday. Aww. What is that? <laughs> oh, right, I pause. Can we pause? pause. What, is what is that? What is that? What is he giving her? Is it an anklet? A belt? Is it a bracelet? A baby a belt? A belt? A kumite belt? Uh, I also want to know about the signs on the post behind them. <laughs> Let's dance, one says. That feels like that was not art department because no, 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 there's no art department on this movie. <laughs> so he comes, gives her a gift, and then she's like, "Okay, gotta go." So was the idea like, "Let's meet up on the street corner for 30 seconds." I can't be there long. Like I didn't even understand because this is—you can read their lips. This is what they are saying. Yes. Happy birthday! Here's your gift. Gotta go. Oh, and then, I'm pregnant. Yeah. And then there's like, oh, one last thing. I'm pregnant. Goodbye. <laughs> After they plan on having a romantic dinner that night, and the dinner... Romantic, seems to be, Paul. Well. Romantic? Honest to God, if she saw that, what that layout he had, 
She would happily be killed. <laughs> well, the she escaped a worse fate. <laughs> the romantic dinner seems to be a birthday celebration for him. <laughs> Unless he wanted to give her two ninja swords. That's what I couldn't figure out. Wait that a it was second. Like a I thought it was his birthday. No. Because, no, he reads a card she wrote to him. <laughs> On your birthday, you don't write a card to someone wait, else. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, watch. Hold Look on, two. hold on. Look. Incredible. Oh. It's not fair. It's not fair. Why? 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 <laughs> the balloons and the balloon uh, 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 table, um, you know what I'm saying. Oh, you know what? Maybe I cut out that part where... He does read a he reads a card he from reads her. reads a card. And there's a but framed I thought picture it was of the his, two of them too. I thought it was his birthday. And why destroy the framed photo, the memory of this woman who was just murdered like all of, ah! these, all of these things are worth examining sure. But real talk, is he planning on giving her two swords <laughs> for her birthday? That's she, all I want to know. Because well, I couldn't get that out of my head for the okay, rest so, of the movie. So here's the thing. I was also uh, fraught with this detail. Because that, that, that tablescape, that birthday dinner is already set up. So if it's... Uh, I don't know. Because like, if it's his birthday, then she just went to the rooftop of their apartment and left everything out there in the morning, and he walked no, into I it? No, I think it's her birthday, and he's set that up for her because he says, I'll, I'll but, see you later, blah, blah, blah. But why did she write him a card? Who on earth knows? Well, okay, so, so let's go one step further. Opening scene. They World meet Trade up. Center. <laughs> Opening shot of this movie, I was like, whoa. Okay. The opening scene, they meet. Happy birthday. I'm pregnant. See you tonight. She's murdered minutes later. We catch him on the roof. The news is found out, which means he's been sitting catatonically all night long? No, I don't think so. I, I think this is... So I think he sees his wife either during her lunch break or prior to work. Sure. Gives her the, whatever he gives her, happy birthday, I'm pregnant, see you later. Great. She then walks away and is stone cold murdered. Right. Then what happens is we cut to the news director and um, the woman in the wig who comes into this scene right here. <laughs> and they say, did you hear about John's wife? R.I.P. Uh, we got to take care of him. Let's take a helicopter. Yes. Uptown. Let's take a helicopter to his house. I, I, I couldn't figure that I out. I feel like what happened is John had access to a helicopter. Somehow, Absolutely. some way, John had access they were gonna to a helicopter. They were going to get as much use out of it as <laughs> in the like, beginning, and it's in the end. Yes. And again, I tip my hat to him. At, some, at a certain point in this movie, a man is hanging off of a helicopter. That's and flying stunt. through the air. It was amazing. That stunt on a budget of, I'm going to say $15 because yeah. I'm equating 85 for the mask, is scarier than anything Tom Cruise has ever done in yes. Mission Impossible. Fully agree. A thousand percent. I mean, that is wild. <laughs> and also, how do they get a permit for that? Because... I don't think not. they got they did, one. They didn't permit anything. And you know how I know? Because you revealed that it was shot in Hoboken. <laughs> which in 1984 was a lawless place. I have to say something important. Jason, I yes. don't think... What's her name, that character's name? Randy? I yeah. don't think that was a wig. Zoinks. Which is even crazier. I think that that's really? hair. I okay. think it's all hair. I think hair. you're right. I think you're right. I think it is. Wow. 
There's no makeup on this movie. And I think she's like, I'm in a movie. I'm going to get my hair to be the third co-star of this film. And it was. Her hair hair ran away with this film. I just had a thought. Do you think the samurai swords were a present for the baby? Ah. If, If the framed picture was for her... But the swords were for the baby eventually. One were day, a baby gift. That would be amazing because it would be like New York Ninja and baby, like a cop and a half kind of well, a thing. Well, that's kind of where we end up a little bit. I guess. He does get like a, a, a mentee at a certain point. He they go fishing together. In a Speedo. Yep. Um, it's so I hard love... to know, though, what, what else was in those eight hours, because like, I would love to have known what his history was as a ninja, like where he learned about this and, yeah. you know, why this skill hasn't shown up till now. There are so many unanswered and questions. Where does he go to get his Ninja Stars monogram? Yes. Great question. Because they are monogrammed as New York Ninja. So he definitely was at one point had a plan. It wasn't like... New York Ninja returns. No, he his branding of himself was like on point from the beginning. He saw that and he actualized it. He saw that there was a hole in the market. He saw the white space. He's By like, the, the way, city needs a vigilante. It, I need to identify myself. Can someone etch New York Ninja into these throwing stars? Yeah, and, and I feel like he bought them wholesale. He got a great deal. It would be like Batman putting, like, Batman on his Batarang. <laughs> there is a moment, though, where the, the boss of the, of the news channel um, says, we're making these. Like, they're making the news? He's like, you can keep that one. Why are you giving away merch? You, are you part of the system at this is point? The, I don't even know if it's merch. I think it's evidence. I, I, so this is what's so crazy. So... One of the cops goes undercover at one point. Incredible word. <laughs> is immediately abducted. <laughs> She's like, he's like, what are you wearing? She's like, I'm undercover. They're like, bag <laughs> overhead, goodbye. By the way, the news reporter is abducted like 15 times. Yeah. She can't walk two steps of get, getting abducted. Like, I mean, she is... You'd think she'd be a little bit I more know. aware the now, third or fourth time. My question... Now that we're... Yo, Kijun... Do you need to stand up again? <laughs> oh God! It's what just happened there? I don't know. Just, it's just how just, many times that woman got abducted? <laughs> she was abducted. She's like, oh no, again! <laughs> it's like if you're her. You're just staying home. You're under yeah. like a self-imposed stay-at-home order. Just yeah. like. Yeah, but she doesn't. She goes she, out. She, she literally, gets, she's lying down in the back of a car. She's like, uh, uh, I got to go home. Uh, I got to go home. I got to get abducted. She's like doing Broadway level abductions. She's like, I got a noon show. I got a seven o'clock show. I got to just take a it nap before be the next one. It would as if Rosanna Scotto got kidnapped every single day. When she's out with Jack. Her cameraman, right? Wait, that's her name, right? Rosanna Rosanna Scotto. Okay, thank God. I was like, I'm pulling this, but I don't know if I'm right. Um, When she is out, uh, uh, Randy, Randy? Yeah. Yeah. When Randy's out with Jack, the cameraman, and they're capturing all this footage, and then the bad guys, the, the, the punks, start chasing them, Jack is like, peace, later. He is like, lady, you're on your own. She doesn't get 10 feet, and he's on the roof of a building. He's, it's crazy. He is so out of there. And she's like, come on, guy. She is a victim of, I believe, and this is what I was going to say a moment ago, she is a victim of both sets of independent bad guys. One are roaming gangs of street toughs who just appear to want to beat steal, kill, rape, pillage, whatever and they're up to. burn holes through newspapers. And burn holes through newspapers. And then there is the plot that is the... <laughs> okay. Can we even try to break down this plot? All right, I so. will try. So, so we have two 
top tier villains, which are the the it, well, the man who is revealed to be an Interpol agent, who's yeah. like talks like this. they got a great guy to play him. Yes, it doesn't have an Although accent. Although in the, in the closing credits, he's billed as Pale Man. Pale Man, great. And then they he speaks to the plutonium killer, who wears sunglasses all the time, has toxic touch. I'm not well, sure, but they want they want specific women abducted as per order by giving their headshots. Headshots, which would make me think they were models, but then but those, what are those abductions for? Interpol. No. For, yes. No. For what? Because no, for Interpol. No, no. Interpol is investigating an international prostitution ring. But I think he's by... undercover like that cop lady. Yeah, he's undercover. He's tell he's the one who right, sips the martini it, like this. Mm. Oh yeah. He's drinking a martini in his car. Oh, They're so doing I see what you're the, saying. So he's he's giving those headshots undercover. Okay, and saying, great. Yes. get me these women and more. And then the but, bad guy gives him headshots. And he's but, like, what's yeah. so yes. crazy about why? it? <laughs> I don't know why. That power exchange that power I feel dynamic like the guy I can that made understand. The movie found a stack of headshots and was and like, I'll put like, these use in the them. movie. Use them. They used every prop they have. Like at one point, one of the bad guys, one of the street thugs, was had two like dolls with him. <laughs> Inexplicably. Like a um, welcome back Cotter doll. The, like, they, yeah. Those two bad guys spend a tremendous amount of time in that lot in Williamsburg with the city in the background, or maybe it's uh, Hoboken, I'm not sure. <laughs> and the plutonium killer has. <laughs> I have bad guys in cars. One guy talks in slow mo. One guy talks in crazy chipper accent. Driver eats ponytail. The driver is my favorite character. Me too. Incredible. Me too. Incredible character. At one point, I was like, at one point, I was like, is that Elijah Wood? That. (laughs) I wish. I wish for him that that was Elijah Wood. He looked so much like him, and he was so incredible. And then his final fight sequence, where he played the drunken... What was it called? What was the name of... Oh, Drunken Sword Style. The drunken, like a uh, yes, drunken master where he did and that, so forth. It was just so compelling. What I love about that, and if anyone has ever worked in production, one of the hard things about shooting exterior locations is that you lose the light. Which means that you start a scene and the light goes down and it doesn't match and you're racing to finish it before you lose the light. And in that final fight scene, they're like, no, nope, we lost the light. <laughs> like, there are, it's day, it's night, it's dusk. Doesn't matter. Things are happening. And doesn't I will matter. say, the karate and the sword play doesn't seem like it needed that much time. You could have probably gotten all that out in one, one take. Totally. Here's um, my question, though, about the Interpol Pale Man. So he's undercover. So in his undercover operation, he is comfortable with with putting, like, I want to say a dozen women in chains for, I don't know how long. Oh, no, long. no, that's well, not him. That's, that's not the him. plutonium guy. That's the other set of bad guys. The other we, guy. I don't think we ever see the plutonium killer fulfill an order to the pale man. See, basically the plutonium killer is like, he wants 20 girls. Well, we can't give them to him piecemeal. We got to give it over all at once. It's like, he's like doing a collection of them. But he's he like, what can we tie him to? But he well, keeps killing them himself, frame. right? What? He keeps killing them himself? Is that the deal? Oh, so, no. so this is what's so confusing. Okay, so I didn't realize that. I thought that those girls were going to the pale man and that that was part of his sting. No, so, but, those girls are going to go... No. So <laughs> the Interpol guy yeah, is talking man. to the sunglasses guy yeah. to get him women because the sunglasses guy can kidnap headshots. Now I'm realizing headshots are probably from all the actors who auditioned for this movie. So that's what he's Pro- using. Probably. So he's like, I'll get you... You think ex- there were auditions for this movie? <laughs> they said that every morning a different... They, they would lose the crew every day, so every morning they'd meet at the Howard Johnson's on 42nd Street, uh, and they're like, all right, so today I'm the sound guy, I'm the... I'm, I'm stunts, and I'm makeup, and they would just go off and shoot. Um, so 
the, that is actually true. Um, it's in my notes. Uh, but so the plutonium guy, yeah. he's ex-CIA. He's been exposed to plutonium. His side hustle is capturing tons of girls and selling them to the British man for prostitution purposes. Okay, so that's his side hustle. His regular day-to-day job is just killing women, like having sex with them. Well, I think the plutonium's an aphrodisiac. Wait, what? (laughs) Because... So you think... You think this is, he's in a trafficking business. Yeah. And maybe Jim Caviezel's gonna come in and save the day or something? I feel like the, so we see him with plutonium twice, right? It, like, first he opens it up and he pretty much, I called it like an orgasm box because he opened it up and he's like, ah. <laughs> is that what you look like when you orgasm? I'm doing him. I'm doing him. <laughs> and then, And then his face sometimes melts, sometimes doesn't. Same with his hands. Yeah, Yeah, and his hands also melt. So it seems like, but then it goes back to normal. That's odd. He has like a stigmata. He has like a big hole in one of his palms. And then when he's having sex in the car, he... With a woman who has the largest breasts we've ever seen in any movie, full stop. They, I think I read that they had to get a bigger car to shoot in. I heard that was a specialty ad for Cadillac. <laughs> uh, I loved that woman because when we first saw her, I didn't imagine her breasts were going to be that big. So it was really like it kept on, they kept on unfolding. Oh, yeah. And it's the, why... ge- the geography of that sex scene in the car was so confusing. Couldn't like, make heads. I, I couldn't was make like, heads is she tails. facing him? Then I realized she's facing away from him. I didn't realize and they I'm were like, having sex for a while. Neither did I. Neither. I thought, I thought he say? must be killing her. I, I thought that she was like drunk or something. I didn't understand. I was like, why is she looking like she's having sex? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I felt dirty for watching it. Um... And it was crazy, like, the chauffeur was underneath her boobs. <laughs> trapped. Pinned. But then... And I don't know how this works, but I, I, I know that some people, like, they use poppers, right? Like, for, sometimes in sex, you use a popper, right? Is that a thing? Poppers. Is it a thing? Are you, poppers. Are you asking... Are Central you asking? New Jersey? Poppers. So, he seems to use plutonium as his popper, and he's like, Ugh! and then he puts his plutonium hands on her, and, and she dies. And that's, well, and that, that's the moment. But that melts her, but that doesn't kill her. No. He, has he, to chokes, snap her. Her. <laughs> he chokes her with the, the pendant that he used to hypnotize her very easily at a scene that was clearly shot during Halloween in Washington Square Park. All stolen Absolutely. footage. And... He is in that scene. This is what the movie does. It makes you crazy. Because he's wearing a mask, he turns away, and when he comes back, the mask is gone. Well, this is the same with the roller skates. Yes! The roller skates. skates. He's roller skating around, doing ninja on roller skates action, which I was like, I don't get this at all. Because he's not a very good roller skater. Yeah, he does, he does not look comfortable. And then when he has to jump, he jumps over a car or he does a flip or something, he lands on flat feet, runs a couple of steps, and then he's on roller skates again. And As then, if, yeah. Then they add in sound effects of feet. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just watch some roller skating clip four? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, look what I got. Yeah, what did you get? What the? What the fuck are you? Oh, oh my God. Look at this Thank person you. in the background. Thank you so much. Look at much. everybody in the oh, I can't believe oh. we got it back. That was amazing. Broadway and Bond. There you go. That's Get there. not agile. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get him! Get him! Get him! What are they making this? Oh, whoa! That's no, 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 no,
None. Me. None. None. And oh, oh shit. Right after this, skates again. R- directly after this, it's a shot of his. Yes! <laughs> That is amazing. In the shot, can you rewind that bet for a second? Because watch that transition. Wait, that- what is that sign, that comedy sign? By the way, can, before we start it, I want to say New York has never looked better than in this movie. Every building, all the graffiti, the subway, everything has such great visual uh, 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 complexity that yes. I was like riveted by everything happening in the background, including every person walking by being like, what the fuck is this? One of my favorite moments is that robbery that when he's on the roller skates, when we reveal that, it seems like the mugging happens and then they run about five feet away and they go, whoo, we did it, high five. They don't go down an alley, they just kind of get about half a block. And he is able to be there in full ninja gear instantly. Which means, I mean, look, it looks like a lot of crime is happening in the theater district. I was looking at all the great shows. The Kaja Foe, uh, cats. there was a, Cats. Oh, um, I'm sorry, but did everybody see that they walked past a movie theater playing Ninja 3, The Domination? Yes. I did not see a that. A movie we've done on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite moments in the movie is when he is meeting the cop for the first time. A young cop out on the street. He's like, we'll get to your dead wife. We got a lot of stuff going on. And then he stands in between two signposts, like a pinball. And he just goes, bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, bong. He just, that, I don't know. It's so crazy, because at first I was like, wow, this is such a crazy interpretation of grief. And then I was like, actually, this feels very truthful in many ways. And I appreciate what the director did here. I was surprised that, in his grief, early in the movie, his wife has just died. He's got, you know, all of these things of hers that he's trying to process his grief and he's emotional. And at one point, he's present while a gang of thugs shake down a child. They are going to murder this child, and he lets it happen. He, John does nothing. nothing. He wistfully watches a child get beat up like, <laughs> oh, those were the days. <laughs> and then he kind of shakes his head and then walks off just like that woman who watched his wife get murdered in the subway stairs people are immune to violence and that kid is a little kid and what could he have possibly have done to the man wearing the Van Halen patch he's wearing a Van Halen <laughs> like I feel like I, I didn't think that guy was into Van Halen uh, uh, not uh, not egregious or as egregious as the costume choice to put the mayor in ripped jeans. At one point, I thought the mayor was wearing slippers. <laughs> I would believe it if it, it was, because I believe they're just grabbing people and being like, stand right there, don't worry, you know, stay, just stay yeah, there. My and part, favorite... I think a part of the reason why the, the, most of the thugs, the gang of thugs, yes, they're in masks because we're doubling up on whatever five actors we have, but also, I think, so they could stand out amidst yeah. the crowd. Like, they had to look insane. Yeah. They all truly looked like they had escaped a mental institution. They looked like the Joker's villains. It was yeah. like, the Joker and his crew are out there. It's like, they all are like clowns. They are dressed yes. like clowns. Except that one of them, again, I hate to say it, is dressed like Woody from Toy Story. <laughs> And I'm not even kidding, and I wish I'd marked it so we could show it, but there's one group of toughs that have all the normal looks, except one of them is wearing tiny Western gear like he's Woody from Toy Story. And it's fucked up. It's very strange. So, oh God, I wish, we, I wish we knew more about the costume designer, because... Again, I'll tell you the costume designer. So tomorrow, 8 a.m. at the Howard Johnson's, bring something weird. Because Click. even the women, though, and just to go back to slips for a second, because I grew up, I grew up in the age of slips. Like, I wore a slip in the 80s. Slips seemed to me like the sexiest thing you could possibly have. Really? Oh, yeah. Because I never knew why I was wearing slips, and I didn't know I was, they were being forced upon me. 
And I think the idea, the actual function of a slip is so that you won't see through a dress, right? So that you won't see through and, and another is, layer. Yeah, and isn't it also so a dress will hang straight and not get bunched up? I don't know about that. Well, but slip, are there slip experts? <laughs> Any slip spurts? What? They won't looks- slip to the stockings? They won't, oh, they won't stick to yeah, I didn't know that. You I wear was... a slip so your dress doesn't stick, stick to, to your stockings. stockings. Of course. You wear a slip so your dress doesn't stick to your stockings. You wear a slip so your dress doesn't stick to your stockings. So, it, it's... we just created a <laughs> a theater warm up. <laughs> <laughs> That's how My, we're gonna like every we night just, before the fa- show. <laughs> we're gonna be backstage. <laughs> You wear a, a slip, slip so, so your, your dress, dress doesn't, doesn't slip stick to your, your stockings. stockings. It's like a fashion version of My Fair Lady. <laughs> but yeah, so you're so the era of slips was also when we were all wearing stockings too. Again, no one knew why. It was just it was just what you were doing. But all of those women were in slips, various shapes and sizes. But there was one woman who was wearing. <laughs> I'll never forget it as long as I live. She was wearing stockings and her underwear over the stockings. <laughs> In what scene? In the scene I where they're all about. leaving the warehouse. Oh, okay. She's okay. wearing black stockings and like a light blue set of cotton underwear, well, thick, thick underwear over it. Also, a number of the bad guys are wearing cod pieces <laughs> as if. They're the droogs from a clockwork orange. Yes. Like That's they're jock saying, straps but... slash cod pieces. There I, I are do choices. Say... There are choices made in this movie that are astounding. And it is, I think you're right, Paul, in that it is all, I think there was nobody doing wardrobe. I think these are all the individual actors' interpretations of what so they were told to do. you think that woman as. was like, I'm going to wear black stockings, yep. but I want to wear my underwear over it. That's okay. who I Let's am. That's who my the, character is. Look at is. these guys. Look at this. I mean, each and every one of them is absolutely berserk. This is... We've got cowboy hat juggalo over there. That's He's what got they like, all feel like is juggalos. Yeah. The, what I feel like in this movie... This guy's movie, wearing, like, a, a World War I pilot helmet. This guy's wearing the, the protective gear for some sort of sword play. This feels to me like a lot of villains that you played in the old arcade game Double Dragon. It's like... It, and it looks like, even though that was, like, 8-bit resolution, this looks like 8-bit resolution. It's like, the costumes don't pop, but it's just like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wear a face mask. That's Woody. This guy has a cane with a tiny hand, by the and way. I, I want to be clear. That is not the guy dressed as Woody, even though he's wearing a cowboy hat. That's not who I'm talking about. I appreciate about. you calling that out. I want to go back to the woman with the dress, uh, with the slip and the underwear. In my mind, she was brought in, and they said, well, you just wear uh, these stockings. And she's like, no, I'm going to wear some underwear here. I don't want you to get any think, weird upskirt shots of me here. Yeah. I think you're right, Paul. I think it was protective. It's also, it's great to know that you're so into slips. <laughs> I, I had just no idea. thought that that was, I thought, I was like, hey, good slip action in this movie. We don't get a lot of great slip action. That's your, that's your kink? Slips, I just felt huh? like slips, I haven't really gotten a chance to, you know, See experience slip. slips. This tour has a lot of like fashion insights. We talked about body suits the other night. We're getting into Slips all of it. tonight. One of my favorite moments is after the uh, mayor does his interview, they just keep like the camera rolling for some small talk. It's like, oh, I'm glad it didn't rain today. I know it was great. The kids are out in the swings. Oh yeah, look at the. Oh my God, we're under ten. <laughs> but I just love that like little bit of small talk about. Oh yeah, the kids are out in the playground today. It, just was so, it was so banal. Like, why? Why, are, why do we need to be in this moment? And what, I guess, the question that I have is, they had to kill John's wife. Why? Did they why? have her headshot? Well, oh, no, because they're trying to abduct oh, the question. other woman, and his wife 
tries to intercede. But what would she have said? Oh, yeah, I saw Freddie Cufflinks, which is the character's name. Uh, when John bites the cufflink, I was like, is he trying to get close to his dead wife? Is he trying to tell if it's real gold? Like, what's the... What's I his... don't know, because to be honest, when we, we saw several tight shots of the, those cufflinks. They never looked the same. I was like, well, that one doesn't look like the one we saw before. And are we and to assume the guy him? is just wearing one of them in the, late, in the later scene? I don't know. It did seem like he was trying to taste them so that he could recognize them by taste. <laughs> I felt like he was like, wait a minute, is this chocolate-covered cufflink? <laughs> nope, not him. Now, I think it would have been much more fulfilling if one of the main villains killed his wife because he does have multiple f- fight scenes, but not with Johnny Cufflinks, right? No. Johnny no. Cufflinks, unless I have a feeling he's in a mask and he's one of these guys. So Johnny Cufflinks Whatever. has an alter You would ego. think Johnny Cufflinks and his crew were the big Freddy bads. Cufflinks. Freddy, Freddy Cufflinks? Cufflinks? Oh, Freddy. Sorry. So sorry. If... I'll be honest, if you know the names of the characters in this movie, <laughs> fuck you. I'll, I'll give you all the names. Uh, the names are as follows. The Cameraman, Freddy Cufflinks, The Kid, The Pale Man, Rico, Switchblade, Rat Tail. His name is Rat Tail? Incredible. Plutonium Killer. Uh, and then uh, the two detectives actually have names, Detective Janet Flores and Detective Jimmy Williams. I will say, um, talk about Rat Tail one moment there. Rat Tail, when he does tiny hands, it's one of my favorite things. Like, I think it's a keychain or potentially like a, um, a, a cane top that has tiny hands. So when he is rubbing his own face with the... <laughs> gold hand. It's like that, that sketch that uh, Kristen Wiig did on Saturday Night Live with the little tiny hands. <laughs> I was like, and that clearly was a joke. Or, I mean, it's crazy. It's a crazy moment. In a movie full know. of crazy moments. When, when, um... They leave a woman in the trash. <laughs> they find her body and then in a trash can. They're like, well, see, All right, mean, see you later. See, no, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Paul. They don't do that. They take the trash can off of the two wooden pallets it's on, set it next to the wooden pallets, then all walk away. As and if it's, it's so going to handle itself. I was so deeply connected to that woman, the actress. And I Same. was like, I was literally just like, and I've still been thinking about her. Like, she Same. did... She did <laughs> She did that scene. You know, she did that scene in that car. Give the, her an Academy Award. Honestly, she deserves one. If only we I, knew who she one. was. <laughs> and to Just not like even everybody be credited, else in maybe this it's movie. for the best. The crazy thing about the trash can scene is that it's the first time the cops show up. Like, but the uniformed police officers do not show up in this city, this crime-riddled city, until minute 50. And I will say... <laughs> but that was, that was New York City in the 80s. I guess so. You know? So interesting because it was like the cops are nowhere to be found, but then when they do show up, they come as like a tensum. They're all together. And holding their badge, and like, if it gave me anxiety because like, they have to hold their gun and get their badge out. <laughs> like, here, here's my badge and my gun. And I'm in police uniform. Like, they're... Like, who... They need to show their badge to the New York the crazy ninja? Thing, the crazy thing about the, the, woman who, the woman who's a cop who went undercover is that she dresses up in an I Love the New York Ninja t-shirt as her undercover <laughs> alias. But then she also keeps her badge on. Can I? Yes. She also keeps her badge on. She's also the character that when they find the woman in the trash can, she says, I'll have to do the autopsy to figure that out. So in my mind, she's oh, the coroner. Her. Wait, that's her? She's, You're right, she's that the, is her. She's the coroner, or it seems as though she is. But then later, the coroner goes undercover? <laughs> but what? then, after being kidnapped and then released, like she says, well, I'll see you guys tomorrow. And then the other guy's like, I'll take care of the paperwork. What? <laughs> like, they just rescued... 
30 women from an underground dungeon. He's like, I'll do that. As long as you're here by 9 a.m. and you get the coffee, okay? Like she's like, I gotta sleep this off. I mean, these women are resilient. They come back oh, yeah. again oh, and Randy, again. Oh, Randy, Randy, the movie should be about Randy. Because yeah. she goes through a tremendous amount. She really does. And Randy's hair, just to go back to it for one more second. Randy's hair, it was like she had 10 hairstyles in one hairstyle. I've never quite seen anything like it. It was like, it was every hairstyle on one head. Ugh. I wish she was here right now. I know. If only she didn't pass away mysteriously. <laughs> I feel like to... everybody in this movie got on the same airplane lost style and has been, like, disappeared. I'm going to go out into the crowd right now. Uh, I'm going to go check out what's going on. Um, I'm also going to put on my special hat. I'll hold the mic, so don't worry about grabbing it. All right, here we go. What's your name? Jenny. Jenny, what is your question about New York Ninja? Well, it's more of a statement. Did anyone else notice that every newspaper headline had the same two stories underneath it? <laughs> no, that's, that's great. great. They, did ha- they did get quick headlines out there. I mean, they had catchy headlines. And was the newspaper responsible? Well, basically, the head of the news organization does say, you're a great reporter. You've got to figure this out. Like, is that, she, but the, here's yeah. what I didn't understand. Is that why they wanted to capture the reporter so many times? Because she was, because she didn't seem close to breaking that story. I will say, well, I don't, I will say the bad guy is like, bring me that reporter at one okay. point. Okay. So there is a desire. They say something to the effect of she's getting too close to this or blah, okay. something, that, right? The, something like that. Was that the bad guy in the cardigan? Because there is a bad guy in a full-on cardigan as well. Really? I, are you are the, talking about the helicopter pilot? No. Are you There's, talking... Who? The guys, the guys who meet the plutonium killer by the car, and he goes, hey, assholes. Like that guy. Remember when the... When the, the, the Wait, when, when he's in the car with the corpse that he just fucked? No. Oh. When he, it's the scene after that. He's in the car as the chauffeur... And then your oh. ninja jumps yep. backwards or forwards with a net. Uh, by the way, the he ninja... reveals he has great jumping ability too late in the movie. Yes. Great jumping and carries a full net. But you know what he never carries? His ninja swords. <laughs> They're Prominently the... placed Back in the there. beginning of the movie. Never uses them in combat. Yes. Uh, who had, who, you had a question? Or you, or which one? Oh, my gosh. All right, yeah, let's go to you. Two things. One absolute favorite part is knife, catch, and then use it to stab uh, the other thug. Second is, I don't know martial arts, are powder eggs a yeah. thing? <laughs> is that like a... I, I, call, also, I call them flower grenades. His, his most used weapon is some sort of chalk egg that he show, throws in people's faces. Hold That's on, what is it? Okay, if these two are telling me it's glass Ooh. dust with such assurance that, Paul, you need to talk Where to them. Where are they? Uh-huh. Right there. I mean, the I'm glass so, dust so twins. I'm oh, so sorry. All right, how did you know it was glass the dust? The glass dust brothers. Followed out eggs filled with glass dust thrown in someone's eyes. You know this. Yeah, it's like a ninja thing. Oh. It's a ninja thing. I will say yeah, Paul, it's a ninja thing. You wouldn't get it, Paul. It's a ninja thing. I will say, that person, if you are listening to the podcast, is in full ninja gear. All right, so... All right, what have we got over here? We have right, two ninjas me, right, in the audience. What do you got? Name and your question. Name is Chris. My question is, have you ever seen a movie with this many guns that are not fired? Great question. Lots of guns pointed, very rarely fired. I'm assuming because, once again... They were shooting scenes in public with unsuspecting people. So is the, you notice that like there's a lot of like when the guns do they just do this and they're out of frame for a second, you know. All right, your name and your question. Uh, my name is James, and an observation first: uh, the company that remade this movie, they're actually their primary source of business is remaking old pornos. <laughs> is is remaking old pornos? They, re, they remake. Old pornos from the 70s and 80s. 
They remake, remake them? them? Make them. What do you mean, re- like, a, like a reboot? <laughs> Hold on, guys. I'm seeing something that's freaking me out. Is there a ninja? It What? looks like a ninja. Sir, are you hanging from the ceiling? <laughs> He is. This, I just saw feet. Where? From the center of the... Where? Look, right here, right where the, the balcony starts, there are two hanging feet. Kick those Wait. feet, show us those feet. Can we turn the projector off? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, stand There's up, because people underneath them stand up and show... show yeah, you guys What stand are you up, up point. to? Oh, he's running the projector. Well, you're amazing, but that... Give freak- it up for this guy! Okay. That freaked me out. That, that can't be code. That can't be safe. Only in Jersey. Just to be talking to that gentleman about 70s pornos and then seeing feet hang down. Are, are, are Freddie, you- we're going to need you to hang off of the uh, tubes and run the projector for the dumb podcast show. These are- fucking animals are coming in. They're going to tear the place apart. Uh, so tell me, I see a lot of notes out. What do you got? Question slash comment. Uh, the helicopter pilot that they kidnap, right? They kidnap him, but then when the New York Ninja jumps on the helicopter, the pilot actually attacks him. Well, I guess he was brainwashed, right, very quickly. Because Stockholm Syndrome sets in quick, especially when you go to higher altitudes. I was obsessed with that helicopter pilot because to make the choice Because I do think that that was that actor's choice. I think, unless he didn't know he was being filmed. That's also a possibility. That was John Liu going, you want to be in a movie? And he's like, let me fight. Okay, well, it doesn't work for the plot, but sure. And that's what happened, I yeah. think. Yeah, he's like, okay, but I want to kick the ninja's ass. <laughs> And he's like, well, that wouldn't be what's happening. Uh, do it anyway. And then the bomb that you have to... Re- It's like a radio, it's, it's movies for the mind. Enough context clues are there, like, I guess it blew up? I heard a tick, 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 tick. Where was the bomb? We never saw it. And so somebody bomb... says, like, is that a bomb? And well, we again, that's hear... $100. So you have to think about the face melting and the bomb. We all even... done for under $100. We didn't even talk about the face melting. Can we play that clip for a second? Where are the bad guys? Am I the only one who found you? Oh, thank God, Jack. Can you pause for a second? Are You're you telling me that's not a wig? I am, actually. And I know it's confounding, but I do not think it is. Is it a wig? By applause. I'd, I'd have no... Is dif- it Central Jersey hair? Yes. Yes. Now that the lights are up, I am seeing a lot of this hairstyle out there. There are some people who have, I know, who have confusing hair where it, it absolutely looks like a wig, but it's not a wig. I mean, and I do the, think it looks that's like a, of the top, the long of the back, it's a mullet. But, you ha- but Jason, if you were a wig maker, you'd never make this. That's also why I think it's not a wig. I believe she made it herself. <laughs> it is a wig wearing a wig. Oh, I so will... you're saying you think she might have a wig underneath that wig. You think it's a wig on a wig? You I think, think there's... she's double wigged? <laughs> I think there's a baby wig. I think there's a toupee on a wig that's on top of extensions. <laughs> And I think that that actress is John Liu. By the way... <laughs> The plutonium killer, can, you, can we start this again? Because he starts not wearing his sunglasses and then just is. Right? Oh, no, he is wearing... Okay, no, I take this, this part, I didn't understand at all. Of course not. Where are the bad guys? Am I the only one who found you? Oh, thank God, Jack. Are you okay? Come with me. Oh, look. It's the ninja. Yeah? So what? I don't have time for that. Let's go, Randy. Uh, you're 
not Jack. Finally! <laughs> now here's the thing. What the fuck is this movie? And you would think that this would be like a, aha, okay, it's all coming together. But like, he's using the mirror. To, oh, he's photo sensitive, right? We hear no, no, at one point. He's, he's light, light sensitive. sensitive. So here's the thing. It's, I know it's photo sensitive, but... What I'm saying is... He's not is, sensitive to photographs. I guess what I'm saying is, <laughs> in the idea, in the idea of the movie, like if vampires are photosensitive or sensitive to sunlight, whatever it is, you don't need to put more light in his face. Like, the sunlight would do the trick. Right? I think, that, but, but this... I don't know, because this scenario he's in is tricky because he is... Wearing a, a jack mask. Anybody here wearing a jack mask? <laughs> Three people. Um, a man, and, I mean, he went to great lengths to I, perfectly replicate. I don't know how you would do that. Including body type. But jack I believe, the cameraman. I believe that whose that, car got trashed. Jack, Again, the that's lengths, your car. The lengths they are going to to capture Randy. Yeah. By jack, the way. Jack, that's your car. At one point, Jack and Randy, who are sent to investigate this wave of crime, go, oh my gosh, these people are crazy. It's like, yeah, that's the assignment, that you're covering them. You shouldn't be surprised at it. But Jack, I believe there's voodoo going on because the plutonium killer looks at the headshot of Jack. Don't know why Jack has his own headshot. And when that melts away, is that how he's making the face? I think it's his actual skin. Yeah. What do you mean you think it's his actual skin? <laughs> Hang on. Paul, Hold on. one yes. of the ninjas has an answer. <laughs> They're so far away from me. You can wait. I'll, it's okay. I'll get down. We'll repeat it's it. Okay. We'll repeat Hang it. Hang on. Oh, you think it's Jack's face? that he's wearing as a, a flesh mask. <laughs> Got, it. Got it. Oh, so he killed Jack and cut off his face and put it on himself and wore it like a mask. And it works wow. so well that Randy thinks wow. it's Jack. <laughs> Guys, we know Face Off. <laughs> I'm, I'm with a group of people in I Love New York Ninja shirts. Oh, really? Um, yes. Who has the best question out of the three? Okay, you do. All right, your name. I am Will, and just like an observation I made, or actually my mom made, is that the helicopter that he plants the bomb in and the helicopter that the bomb explodes in are two different helicopters. <laughs> wow. Where's your mom? Good, good helicopter eye, Mom. How do, you, how do you get on that helicopter tip? Just paying attention all the time, nonstop. Wow, she got yeah, it. That's it. That's it. Can't get away from that mom. All right. Well, obviously, we have an opinion about this movie. There are people out there with a different opinion. It is now time for second opinions. Start joining news crews <laughs> and bite your ponytail brave. I want to give five stars to it. New York Ninja, his murdered wife blues, better make you afraid. My second opinion, it's a hit. New York Ninja, if he can melt your face, he'll melt it. Any 
place. Good luck, Mr. Lou. New York Ninja. What's your name? Rose. Amazing. Rose. Great work. Great job, New Jersey. You did it, New Jersey. And now, New Jersey's own Bruce Springsteen. He's not here. What if he was, though? He has a podcast. He's a big fan. I like how you talk about those crazy ninjas. <laughs> oh, my dad was a ninja. He didn't make much money. But he I did remember, have those stars. I remember me and the big man, we used to watch these ninja movies. Shining those ninja stars. Throwing them into throats. It was different long ago before they emblazed them with New York Ninja. I wrote that about my dad. Um, all right, here's the deal, people. Sadly, and I hate to do this to you because it is a live show, not many five-star reviews. Um, there are only 78 total reviews on Amazon, and they aren't as good as we would expect, but here's the thing. It's a new movie, and I think some people get it, some people don't get it, but the people who do say things like this. I can't this. believe this is a new movie. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I can't. This it will never make sense. feels insane. <laughs> Betty S'mores. <laughs> Title, secure and sturdy. Review, awesome movie. If you're looking for a cult classic, five stars. Secure and sturdy? That sounds like an Amazon review for a footstool. <clears throat> and then accidentally it was logged under this. I, I, I know, and then this is the one that I like the most from James. Uh, James writes this, men will literally become the New York ninja instead of going to therapy. Five stars. That is true. That is true. So many men, when faced with life's biggest problems, rather than admit weakness and go to therapy, they will instead just try and become a ninja. <laughs> I want you need to deal with the loss that you're feeling from the death of your parent. No, I must become a ninja. I will say a couple of things uh, that we didn't touch upon. The way they were keeping these women in the warehouse seemed to be, I'm no, uh, I don't understand layouts and space, but it seemed to be, they could have gotten more women in, but they seemed like they ran out of things. Like, you'll be on top of this cord barrel. You'll be on a giant frame. You're going to be it like... It felt uh, like they were... They were under, like, COVID restrictions. Like, they were all, like, six feet apart in there. Well, it did come out in 2021. <laughs> so, the height I of honestly, the pandemic. Like, I'm honestly like, did this director, like, compile this movie for us? <laughs> I, I feel so like strange. the way that he goes in there and slices through steel <laughs> like it was a cobweb. Tink, tonk, tink. You know, everyone gets out immediately. I was uh, also obsessed with the dubbing where every woman, once she was, the sword broke through her chains, had to make some sort of a sound. It was like, ah, ooh, ah. Like, Wait, everyone you, had to. Did you to, do the dubbing for this movie? I didn't know how to say it. Um, so strange. It, it, it's an odd, it's an odd, odd movie. It ends on probably one of the best ending scenes ever. The reporter goes back to the roof where it seems like from the plot of the movie, she's left him from the beginning. Like, John, did you hear they got Freddie Cufflinks or whatever Nita, his name is? They got Nita's killers. And he's like, oh, I wonder how that happened. And he looks <laughs> right at the camera like, ting! And then we get this amazing still, uh, uh, the L.A. Ninja still, which promotes... L.A. Ninja? Yeah, yes. you didn't see that? Oh, I didn't see that. Jason. I didn't see this. 
The I ninja will return in LA Ninja, and that comes out in 2024. Here's what I'll say. That is still New York. <laughs> well, well, he's heading he, there. He's gonna, he'll get there eventually. So, uh, I guess I'm just, I, I I'm just now realizing that our New York Ninja, our hero, that he, that pilot, that unsuspecting pilot died in that plane, in that helicopter crash, huh? Yeah. Wow. And wow. Well, that's pilots, when they decide to fly, very Well, he t- didn't decide. He was coerced. Well, I mean, look. Hold on. This guy seems to know something. <laughs> I really regret this, but what did the plutonium killer say? All right, so the man says, I'll make you a rich man. The plutonium killer says, I'll make you a rich man if you help me kill the ninja, which is right, because the ninja is now hanging off the helicopter. Yeah. He says, okay. I guess he deserved to die. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, June, before we wrap up, would you recommend this movie? Absolutely, yes. A thousand yes. percent. As would I. I would happily. percent. I would happily right now go and sit there and watch the movie in full. Here's Except what I. Except for the part where I said I would go and sit there. I would not go and sit there because these maniacs are there. Uh, I thought it was great, and I and let's rescue more abandoned films. You know, people don't talk about it. Uh, Bob Barker, you say, spay and neuter your cats. Let's go find these abandoned films. Let's get them back. Can we play into the Sarah McLaughlin? Can we play the Sarah McLaughlin song behind this, please? <laughs> Pictures of ninjas, sound machines, Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> we must find these abandoned films. Thank you, Central New Jersey. You did it. Thank you. you did it, Jersey. Thank you. This is amazing. We love coming to New Jersey. Our first time. We will be back. Thank you, Red Bank. Yeah, thank you. Everybody. Thank you. That's Give right. it up for Jason. Woo. Give it up for June. Give it up for Beth. Give it up for the balcony. Give it up for Stop yourselves. Merch is Standing available. ovation. We're getting a standing ovation. New York didn't do that. Hi. Thank you. Woo. Oh, my gosh. This is amazing. Thank you, everybody, so much. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Eat shit, New Jersey. Thank you so much to the staff of the Count Basie Theater. We love being in Red Bank. Our amazing tour manager, Beth Thomas, for always being there, pulling the best clips in the biz, and everyone in that audience who came in costume. Yes, I'm giving up to those who came in costume for such a great show. If you want to feel like you were there too, well, you can, because we have a special t-shirt designed by the live audience that night. That's right. The shirt says, I heart. New Jersey Ninja, in the style of I Heart New York. It is a great shirt. It has a little wig uh, hairstyle over the heart. You can snag that shirt as a shirt, sweatshirt, sticker, coffee mug, whatever you want, and more. Just grab that at tpublic.com slash stores slash HDTGM. And if you are looking to represent HDTGM this holiday season, a brand new How Did This Get Made ugly sweater is in your future. They are on sale now at podswag.com slash bonkers. We have four different sweater designs, Geostorm, Team Sanity, Team Fred, and a Jack Frost, a Snow Dad's Better Than No Dad. I love these. They're great. They're not going to fade. They're good material. They're comfy. Get them all at podswag.com slash bonkers. As always, we are on the road the next couple of weeks in Chicago and Minneapolis. Head on over to hdtgm.com to snag your tickets, and we got some bonkers movies for you. Next week on Last Looks, you know we're going to be going over corrections and omissions from New York Ninja. So if you have something you want to add to get off your chest, leave me a voicemail at 619-PAUL-ASK or write a comment on our Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm. And of course, as always, Jason will stop by for a chat and we will announce our next movie. We may even share a bonus deleted scene from this very episode that you just listened to. That's right. Last looks bigger, better, 
every single week. And if you haven't heard, we are on the hunt for a brand new theme song for this very show. That's right. How did this get made? And if you're a musician and you think you have what it takes to record a, an earworm, send us a theme song submission at how did this get made at earwolf.com or post them to our discord in the theme song channel. Remember, you can find us everywhere online at HDTGM. If you love the show, tell your friends, tell them to listen. A word of mouth helps so much. Oddly, it's the thing that people tell me the most that that's how they find out about the show. And by the way, it's so much better when you have to watch these bad movies alone. And last but not least, I got to say thank you to all the listeners who support this show every week. Our entire behind the scenes team who keeps this show run. And I'm talking about our producers, Scott Sonny, Molly Reynolds, our movie picking producer, Avril Halley, our engineers, Casey Holford and Rich Garcia, and our associate producer, Jess Cisneros, who makes those amazing social media videos. That's all I got, people. We'll see you next week on Last Looks. Until then, bye for now.